Hey guys, before we get into this video, I'd like to tell you about some of my content that you might be missing. Every month, I do 25 replay analyses and 8 live coaching sessions. All of this that you can sign up for at patreon.com slash bsjgaming. But maybe these are outside of your budget. But don't you fret. All these videos are uploaded to my Patreon and my exclusive YouTube channel, and you can access all of it for just $5 a month. You can sign up for my support tier on Patreon, and that'll give you access to all the updated posts with all the content. You can also get access to it by being a subscriber on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash bananaslamjamma. And in some countries, that'll be cheaper than $5, and you'll be getting your own discount. Once you subscribe on Twitch, all you'll need to do is join the Banana Slamma Jammers Discord and the link for that is in the description of this video. Once you have joined the Discord, go to your user settings, connections, and connect your Twitch to your Discord. And upon doing this, you will have access to a new unseen channel called Exclusive YouTube, where you can see the uploaded videos anytime you check in. And you'll also be getting notifications for when new ones are uploaded. Now, most of you might get enough of BSJ here at my YouTube channel, but just in case that craving just isn't quite yet satisfied, go ahead and check out that exclusive content on YouTube and Patreon. Thanks, guys. Banana slam jam. Okay, guys, welcome back. Got ourselves another BSJ replay. We got ourselves a 2200 MMR Wraith King. He says he got super flamed for this one. Just wanted to push lanes until it looked like we could win an easy fight, but my team kept getting pick it off, picked off, so I never grouped up. Okay, let's check it out, dude. So you're the same guy as the tiny. Uh, same it's item build as I saw before. Um... I mean, I still think back. Quelling Blade's pretty good in most lanes. Uh, I mean, it's mainly good for cutting trees, <laughs> but it's also just 8 damage on melees, so... You didn't build a Quelling Blade last time, so I'm just kind of interested why you're why you're giving up on that. Okay, so you just have a Marana AFK. Okay, not ideal. So this is a lane where, like, right now, I would immediately recognize, based on what happened to me level 1, and based on what my support's doing, that I'm gearing up to leave lane. I don't intend to stay in this lane for very long. So items like Wand, items like Orb of Venom, Blightstone, full phase boots, items like this, because they're laning items, I do not buy them, okay? So get this item out of your quick buy. You're queuing up boots and an armlet, my friend. Brown boots, armlet. You can either skip the brown boots or you can get the brown boots. That's pretty much the only choice you got. You guys need to recognize this as carries. Doesn't matter what bracket you're in. No matter how high you go, you will get griefed from your five positions. You have a five position that has absolutely no intent to play the lane, and the lane without him is pretty hard, okay? So, gear up for it. Brace yourselves. Plan to jungle. Does this item help you jungle? If the answer is no, don't fucking buy it. Bad peasant. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. So because you're against a movement speed based lane, Legion runs at you a lot and Jakiro slows you, I would 100% buy boots and that's really it. I'd buy boots and regen. So you went full bracer and a stick. Defensive aggro. In the name of that king. Bottom tower. Dyer's bottom tower. And there's a Huskar in your lane. Next skeletons I get, I'm out of here, by the way. Never mind, he just fed. I still think I would do that, though. I still think I'm getting skeletons and leaving. I guess now with the new patch, skeletons are okay to max because of the way they work. I would just leave lane like right now. So here's something carries just don't understand. If you can jungle, just do it. I know it's 7.31 where jungle creeps are kind of hard or whatever, but Wraith King's still an amazing jungler, okay? The lane's constantly pushed out near their tower. You're constantly risking yourself to die. And the fact is waiting for these creeps with sh like while like fighting two heroes or sharing XP with Marana is simply inefficient. So sadly, this Marana is actually griefing you ultra hard because he's stacking all these camps and you can't really farm triple stacks. He's like literally trying to ruin your game. Because I see this, I would actually play the lane for one or two more minutes. Um, very impressive stuff from this Marana. But if this was not happening, I would just already leave. It's just already inefficient for you to be in lane. 
So, like, the way I look at these type of lanes... Okay, so you seem like a very, very simple player. What I mean by that is you buy the same items every game and you just rinse and repeat. The two games that you sent me were uh, two weeks apart on two different strength heroes, and you had the exact same items. Uh, the only differing here is that you bought phase boots instead of treads, which is fine. Like, treads on tiny is correct, and phase boots on Wraith King are correct. But these are items that intend to stay in lane. The difference between tiny and Wraith King is that Wraith King can jungle really fast. Tiny cannot. So on tiny, you generally want to buy any item required for you to stay in lane. I talked about in the lane you were in that raindrops and more tangos would have been correct. So itemizing on him to stay in lane. But on Wraith King, the only time you itemize to stay in lane is when you're, like, free farming the lane and your support's, like, owning. But, like, the lane's pushed out, and I need you to understand you're against heroes that, like, trade very well with you. Like, they hit you a lot. You know, they annoy you. These heroes are annoying, okay? Like, I don't want to lane as these heroes, against these heroes. Even if I'm winning the lane, I'd prefer to just push out the lane and jungle. So Wraith King's often a hero where you have two options at this stage in the game. When you're like level 5-ish, you have two options. One, you run up and push the lane with auto attacks, and then you go jungle with skeletons. Or two, you jungle with skeletons, wait till the lane pushes into you, and then you catch it underneath your tower. Anything other than those two things is inefficient, because you're a hero that can clear jungle and lane. So if you're just laning, it's inefficient. Balance of Dota, right? It's like, sure, on heroes like Tiny and Anti-Mage and PA, you're not going to clear lane and jungle at five minutes. Why? Because your hero literally fucking can't. So this isn't like a consideration. So on these heroes, there's a lot of different things to consider. But on Wraith King at the 5 minute mark, you're doing both. So the question that really boils down to on Wraith King, I should probably make a guide on Wraith King, is you just walk up to the creep wave, and if you can hit it, then you can push out the creep wave. If you can't hit it, then go jungle first. It's really all there is to it. So like, yeah, against, against Huskar, you could like stun him and hit him and stuff, but that's not farming. It's like, what happens is, if you could casually walk up to this enemy and crit them, and then hit the creeps afterwards, which plenty of matchups you can do, by the way, then yeah, like, sure, go lane, you know? Like, go lane. Go crit the guy, then go clear the creeps, then crit the guy again if he walks up, and then walk away. And that's what Wraith King does. If you're, like, ultra far ahead in those types of circumstances, you can summon your skeletons to kill the tower. Usually I do that with a catapult. But I can tell you, you think very one-dimensionally. So if you're, if you're going to learn heroes like Wraith King, you need to play him a bajillion times. And your goal on Wraith King, when I say a bajillion, you need to play him 25 times in a row. And your goal at five to six minutes, three points in skeletons, is to recognize, can I just walk up and right-click the wave? If so, I'm going to go jungle after I clear the wave. Can I walk up and right-click the wave? No. I'm going to go jungle and then return to the lane when it's at my tower. There, there's just no exceptions to this. There are none. Fair none. Like, this is just standard Wraith King play. Notice how long it took you to get one creep. So, like, when we could have left for jungle. Right here, we could have left for jungle, right? 450. BSJ, how do I know I'm supposed to leave for jungle? You tell these guys they're supposed to understand they're supposed to leave for jungle, and you don't explain it to us, BSJ. And I'll say, okay, honestly, fair. I use a lot of terms like, you should go jungle here. This is a good Wraith King game. This is what Wraith King does. But this is how we come to the conclusion. So, if you're not Wraith King... You're a hero that probably can't jungle. So there's not any options. So it's whatever. But if you are Wraith King, a hero that can jungle, you just cleared your last creep at 450. Okay? It's 450 into the game. You got your last last hit. We do not jungle. We proceed to stay in lane. Over the next 27 seconds, we get one creep. It has now been 31 seconds. It has now been 41 seconds, and we are now jungling. We got one creep in 41 seconds. This is what you guys just have to see, okay? I understand that you actually went to the jungle. This is great, guys. This is actually great that he went to the jungle late. Because he's like, wait, this lane doesn't feel that great. I'm going to go jungle. But if you can see this ahead of time, where you don't have to wait 47 seconds, or sorry, 44 seconds, to realize you should go jungle, then you're like literally a thousand MMR higher. And all that takes is knowing what hero you're playing. At five, six minutes in, if you know you can jungle, you'll know you'll clear that creep wave right in front of this tower, and you'll know you can't right-click it because you're against Huskar, and then you'll just leave. So it's not a matter of me expecting you to understand every single matchup. It's not a matter of me expecting you to understand every single hero. But the way you guys are going to climb MMR, the way you're going to get better at Dota, is by understanding specific heroes. Understanding how they work, understanding how these rules of lanes tie to that hero. And then learning this shit as you're playing. Right? You're like, ah, shit, I should have jungled. So, like, this should happen the first, like, 10 games you play Wraith King. Like, say you play 25 games of Wraith King, this should happen. Where the decision's, like, a little fuzzy. You know, you're like, eh, I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to leave lane. Sometimes you'll leave lane a bit too early. Sometimes you'll leave lane a bit too late, like here. But, you know, you'll understand that this is the one decision you're really trying to make and understand. 
And guess what happens though? Is you're going to make this decision. You're going to get better and better at this single decision. And then guess what? You're going to understand based on what the enemy hero is when you're going to leave the lane. You're going to know this at minute one. Like I told you that you could know at minute one. And then what's going to happen is between minute one and minute five, you're going to buy items that allow you to survive the lane. And then you're going to leave the lane with items that allow you to jungle, right? You're not going to leave the lane with bracer and an extra gauntlet of strength. You're going to leave lane with full phase boots or like two thirds of an armlet. And then you're jungling with an armlet rather than jungling with with bracer and and uh gauntlet these are not efficient jungling items compared to an armlet or phase boots they're not efficient okay like to compare compared to how much damage they offer you and how much farm speed they offer you compared to cost they're not efficient so this is going to guide your entire first like seven minutes if you just understand when you're going to leave the lane so it needs to be like your that's your sole goal in the next like month between this replay and your next one is to play like 25 games of wraith king and to understand this so you end up taking a stack and you return to lane, great. So it seems like you have a decent understanding of Wraith King. You're doing the whole rotate between jungle and lane, great. Started at 45 seconds late, that's like a thousand MMR right there. If we can get it down to 30 seconds, that's like 200 MMR. If we can get it down to 15 seconds, you know, that's another 200 MMR, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so you're putting a little pressure with the catapult. Great. So notice how when Huskar leaves, you're just walking out and pushing the lane. Great, this is pretty good here. Please just hit the creeps. Yep, just hit them. Doing a little pump fake action here. Being a little inefficient with how fast you clear those creeps, but it's whatever. Could be worse. Please auto attack off cooldown. Okay, you're you're auto attacking kind of, but it could definitely just be faster. This whole mini game of how fast you clear those creeps, you need to understand is like how fast you farm. Like how fast you clear these creeps is a mini game. Literally a little mini game. Yeah, you're gonna you're actually gonna apply power, tower pressure because you got skeletons. I like this decision. Clearly, this guy's in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, that's good. Then you're gonna go jungle down. Great. Pretty good rotations. Honestly, this is all pretty good. Um, the little efficiency things are what will get you to like 4K because you're just not fast enough with what you're doing. But the overall concept, very correct. <laughs> when you're playing a summons hero against stacks. Um, don't summon before you walk into the stack. Pull the stack away from the camp, like pull it to like right here, and then summon your skeletons. Or you need to clear the creeps that kill your summons. So you'd probably kill this one, the Hellbear Smasher, and probably the Centaur Conqueror. So what you could do is you could pull the creeps away from the camp, summon your skeletons, and then stun the Hellbear so they all hit it. Okay? Um, that's probably your best route here, um, to kill these. But definitely just walking into a four stack and summoning your skeletons is pretty papega. Okay, like that's pretty stupid. Your skeletons are just gonna die. That's about the only thing you could do really wrong there. I wouldn't really summon skeletons there. I want you to know that your skeletons are your jungle steroid. Only use them in lane if you need them to push the lane. If you think you can't push that lane past Huskar without using the skeletons, that's fine. But if you thought, like, I'm going to be annoying to this Huskar, don't do that. Use your skeletons to jungle with you. Summon skeletons when you're at 8, because the way they work now, just summon them. Yeah, you're just being inefficient with these little things. Just play more Wraith King, get in the habit. You don't need to finish the camp with the skeletons. Go ahead and walk to the lane right now. Or maybe you're trying to kill it before the minimark. Okay, that's actually understandable. Light your skeletons, push the lane. Okay. So you've cleared the entire jungle. You should TP bottom right now. So your job as a hero is to sweep the map. What? This is like a Wraith King special. This is the carry fucking dream. This is like Wraith King Luna only, I think. Medusa, I think, moves too slow for this. Yeah, this is Wraith King Luna only special. TA. TA as well. TA Wraith King Luna, okay? You are the map sweeper. You are literally the clean sweeper. Like, what I mean by sweeper is you kill every fucking creep on the map. In the last 47 seconds, at 14 minutes into the game, you've cleared like three creep waves here, or two creep waves, excuse me, because that's how many are in a minute. You've cleared four jungle camps, and it's still 13 seconds left on the minute. So what happens here is don't walk places. You TP. Why? Because you need to start in an area where a jungle is going to be farmed. So I want you to think, like, after 47, where do you really go from here? Are you going to, like, go play triangle passively? Are you going to go, like, back to your jungle and play passively? You've been playing 
passively for like the first 15 minutes of the game. This is the perfect time to rotate to the other side of the map and start shoving the lanes into them, right? When I say passively, I'm not saying you're playing poorly. Let's like distinguish this really quickly. You've been defending top tower. That's like a very, actually a very important thing to do. If you're playing Wraith King, the first 15 minutes of the game, it's the fucking dream that you're just shoving the lane out and farming this, shoving the lane and farming this. That's the fucking dream, dude. I'm telling you. You Up until this point, this rotation you've been doing is correct. But at this point in the game, if you see this happening and you've cleared these camps, you basically the first 15 minutes was you working up to the point where you could clear these camps and have time left over. That is what you've been working towards. The reason why it lasts until 15 minutes, the point where you're staying here, it'll last longer if you're farming slower or had a bad lane. It'll last shorter if you farm faster. So it can, it doesn't have to be exactly 15 minutes, but it's this concept of you cleared this entire jungle and you had time to walk somewhere else. If this lane down here was like already here, then you don't go here, okay? Like if the lane down bottom was already at their tier three, at their tier two, the point that I'm trying to make here is you have sufficiently defended this tower. I'm, I'm trying to make sure this is an organized thought. You have sufficiently defended this tower. As a carry, if you are farming, there's like check marks in the game where I'm winning, these things have to be happening. And what those things are when you're winning is that as Wraith King specifically, we keep this tower alive at all costs, meaning if, it's, if, if we're gonna go feed for it, don't do it, but like, as long as we're not dying, we keep this tower alive. And then this lane gets pushed into this tier two. So if one of your teammates is already doing that, then the series of events for you as a carry, let's just make sure we understand priorities, is this tower first right here. Okay, we take this tower first. So if nobody on your team has done that yet, you need to go take that tower. Sometimes this tower being alive will make you leave this area earlier because you can use your armlet timing to go get this tower because this tower is very important. But since this tower is dead, the next priority is to get bottom lane shoved into here. Bottom lane gets shoved into tier two. Once the bottom lane is at least to right here, give or take, at least right here, we can consider collapsing on a mid tower. At no point in the game is it correct to take mid tower in like a normal pub match. You know, if this is professional Dota, sure, go ahead and coordinate or whatever. But in a normal pub match, it is never correct to take this tower while the creep wave bottom looks like this. The only exception is if you guys literally just killed them. Like literally you just showed up to this tower, killed three people right here. They're all dead for 30 seconds. You take this tower and then you TP. But like you killed them, they all died like 20 seconds ago and they're kind of respawning. So this is a, not the situation I'm talking about. So what I'm saying is defend this tower, TLDR, defend this tower like you were. If you, you'll probably have to leave around 10 to 12 minutes if this tower was not taken, whenever you get your armlet. If this tower was taken, then you have to leave when you've cleared these jungle camps and the lane bottom looks like this. I want you to take a mental snapshot of this. You can literally take an actual snapshot of how the minimap looks right now. You've pushed in top. Jungle's farmed, bottom lane shoved into your tower. You instantly fucking TP here. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna start this process of closing the map in on the opponent. Now, there's a small chance I watched this replay and that five seconds from now, you TP bottom. And everything I said to you was wasteless. or like a total waste. But to the people at home, hopefully they still learn something. What I'm concerned about is that if you don't go bottom right now, then what you don't understand is that you need to start collapsing the map. And what I'm really concerned about is if you don't go bottom, that you then go back to your triangle or you go back to here. You guys are so fucking far ahead right now. You are not allowed to start the minute on your own side of the map now. Like now that you've done this backwards sweep, every minute, by the way, you've been f clearing a creep wave and then farming jungle and then returning to the creep wave and farming jungle. That same pattern needs to continue, but the creep wave that you're clearing instead of it being this one is the one down here. If you do anything backwards here, you're fucking noob 2k, okay? I'm just telling you right now. If you don't, you have my seal of approval and I respect what you did. And the noob 2k. So, you went back through the jungle. You've continued the pattern that I didn't want you to continue. And you may say, BSJ, Primal Beast, TB Bottom. The thing is, Primal Beast doesn't take this tower, but you do. So it's actually a really big problem that you have one hero farming top and one hero farming bottom, and the hero that's farming top could have taken the tower bottom and the hero that's farming bottom could not. This is a simple map distribution problem. This happens all the time in pubs and all you guys can do is make sure you're not this guy. So like, if you're in a pub and you're the primal beast, you have to accept what's happening right now. I wanna be very clear. You have to accept what's happening right now. As a primal beast, you're totally content farming like this and you're Wraith King farming top. But if you're the Wraith King, you're not okay at this because you know better and you know you're the guy that's supposed to take the tower because that's your fucking job in the game and you're supposed to be down here. So the reason why I always highlight these small decisions where I 
1447, you decided to walk mid instead of TP bottom, is because it shows a clear lack of understanding of what your hero's role in the game is. I know you're not going to fucking do it, guys. I know you're not going to fucking do it. If you were 2k, there's a reason why you're 2k. If you were 6k, you would have TP'd here. Period. You know? That's like, like obviously a big difference, but there's a lot of little things in Dota that add up to you being 2k. We talked about a lot of things in the laning stage when it came to buying too many small items. We talked about, like, staying in lane for an extra 45 seconds. All these things add up, okay? So when I say, like, one mistake, like, if you were 6K, you wouldn't make this mistake. It's like, yeah, because I've now mentioned, like, nine mistakes that you've made. But I need you guys to see this. That as soon as you can rotate to the bottom half of the map, this game will continue. Because when you're winning, the series of events to win is bottom tower push in bottom lane, or tier 1 mid, and then either tier 2 bottom or Roche. That is the logical sequence of things. So when you're winning, the longer it takes you to do these things, the more time it gives to the opponent to recover. The reason why at the highest bracket, games tend to end faster than they do at lower MMRs is because at lower MMRs, people don't abuse their power spikes as early. That's totally fine. I don't need you to play fucking god tier, clean, perfect Dota. But all I'm telling you, as like an easy understanding of this game, is that 1447 was the moment you were supposed to go bottom. I gave you all the reasons why you were supposed to go bottom. However long it takes you to go bottom is how long you are delaying this game. Okay, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't know exactly how long that is. If you end up going bottom at 20 minutes, you're literally 500 MMR. If you go bottom at like 17, 18 minutes, it makes sense. I would guess you're probably gonna go bottom in the next minute or two. That's my guess. But like, that's just based on your MMR. Or, you know, you can die top. That too. You know, so you lost your you lost your ult. Not ideal. So now you're going to farm your way back to the jungle. Now that you don't have ult, you can't really pressure bottom anymore. So that timing's probably delayed even further. You do have Deso. So yeah, 1447 was the minute we should have gone bottom. That minute was the time that we could have been pressuring the map. And then we just fed a Slark. Um, I'll tell you guys, Wraith King's a really cool hero, and there's a simple reason why. I have had so many games where I'm winning as Wraith King. He has a really strong laning phase. You know, it's not perfect. His, like, level 1 and 2 are pretty weak. But once you get, like, 2 points up in Vampiric Spirit, he's a really strong laner, right? You start, you usually have, like, 1 or 2 right-click damage items by then. Like, you have, like, a Glove of Haste or... Or like a blade of attack and and you're a really strong laner and then you start taking towers you start like jungling you start doing a lot for free your hero just your skeletons are a broken spell so there's a lot of games as wraith king where once you get to like level five or six that the top lane is just absolutely free for you you're jungling while clearing lanes and you're taking a tower this happens a lot in wraith king games like i'll just be honest what you did here happens a lot and you played it pretty well you know we mentioned some things but you played it pretty well and so dota's a balanced game if Wraith King did this and could afford to die like this, like you just did, the hero would have an 80% win rate, okay? Like, if because the early game is so fucking easy. So if you're walking in and feeding them without ult at 18 minutes when you're up by 8k, if you were allowed to do that on Wraith King, the hero would have an 80% win rate. I'll tell you that the reason why the hero's cool is because he gets off to the start, and your only job in the game is to not die without your ult. That's like literally your only job in the fucking game. So if you don't have your ult, play like a fucking pussy ass bitch. That's totally fine. Literally just stay on your own side of the map, using skeletons to push out waves, playing hyper careful, all that kind of stuff. Wait for your ulti to come back up, get BKB, and then go kill everybody. I'd buy BKB here because none of these heroes are mobile and you don't need to catch the Slark. I actually don't know if you realize this. You don't have to kill the Slark because you'll just walk down lanes and as long as he can't kill you, the lanes are going to be pushed in. The only time that you have to buy Blink on Wraith King is when you're against heroes like Puck or something that actually stop you from pushing creeps and you have to kill them. But Slark, if he walks up to you and you just crit him with a Deso, he's going to lose like half his HP. And yeah, maybe he'll get like five stacks off of you and run away or something, but the lane will still get pushed into him. So all this point in the game matters is you getting these lanes pushed in. That's all that fucking matters. So I want to remind you and everyone watching that at 1447, you should have been bottom and the pressure on this tower should have started. At 1447, let's see what items the opponent has. 1447, the Slark doesn't even have an Echo Saber. Legion, no Blink Dagger. Huskar, just an armlet. Supports have no items, okay? That was at the time where you should have been pressuring this tower. It's really important to recognize how early your timings can be because you see what the opponent's supposed to be able to do about it. If you start pressuring bottom tower continuously, I would say over the course of like two or three skeletons usages, it's going to die. While you're farming. You're still farming. But right now, so since this didn't happen, it's now going to be 18 minutes into the game. And we fed a Slark, right? So we died. So by the time we respawn, which is going to be 19 minutes into the game, Slark now has full Echo Saber and like half of his next item. Legion Commander has her blink. Grimstroke has his first item, Glimmer Cape. Makes it much harder to kill a Grimstroke. And Jakiro's almost to his Yules. Okay, about halfway to his Yules. Huskar doesn't really have much, but it's fine. The point is, they have a lot more items and a lot more tools to work with. So you pushing bottom is not going to be nearly as effective. 
Just going fast forward. Look. Thanks for playing, Double kill. You have not walked bottom. What the fuck is happening? Play Wraith King. 15 minutes approximately. Go bottom and take this tower over the course of three skeletons usages. Your win rate will literally double. Please stop. You are actually AFK farming. You are non-existent in this game. Please get out of the fuck of your own jungle and stop being too gay. I beg you guys, please. Literally do the exact same thing you're doing, but bottom. Oh my god, we finally took the tower bottom at 23 minutes, Pog. 23 minutes. I know I fast forwarded a bit there, but I didn't really care until you were bottom. So we finally took the tower. And then you're going to run back bottom. Okay, here's your two choices right now. Your two choices are to pressure this lane in and make them keep coming back. Basically continuing what you were doing with the tier two. Or to push this lane in and do the same thing top. But in this case, you're playing for Roche. So generally, if the opponent has Roche potential, I would stay top. If the opponent does not have Roche potential, I would stay bottom. So if you're staying bottom, what ends up happening is you keep pressuring, you keep pressuring. You force like two heroes to TP here at some point. And the ideal play is to then smoke across the map and kill their carry in their triangle, and then you win the game. If you're playing top, you eventually just push the lanes in, and then you take Roche. Those are really the only two ways to play Dota at this point. Obviously, getting 2Ks to do this is very difficult, so I don't really teach this very much. But that's what you're going for. And if you want to try to call that, you're welcome to. What you're not trying to do is go here, and then here, and then here, and then here. You're trying to push this lane out, and then go here. I don't like this, but maybe the opponent is being so dumb it's called for. So you're in their triangle now, great. Okay. You have no BKB, Huskar's respawning. I don't hate this though. I mean, I know the game's gonna go bad because you said you lost. This looks fine to me. So now we're gonna go clear triangle, we're gonna clear top wave, and we're gonna back. And we're gonna back. Okay, man. I'm actually gonna end the replay right here. So wasting my time after this point. Um, I've watched your games now. I think you've got a lot of things going well for you. But you've got the BSJ effect. You have like three decisions you make a game that are so fucking god awfully bad, you're just gonna lose your games. When this is the state of the map, you are not allowed to go past this line. I'm gonna draw the line for you. You're not allowed to go past it. This this line right here until you have an Aegis. Okay? It's that easy. If you just commit to that, if you just say, you know, my name is Dox. The 2200 Wraith King, don't leave me hanging. I solemnly swear that when I am in, that when I have map control, I will not cross this line until I get Aegis. I solemnly swear to double my win rate by not crossing this line when I don't have Aegis. And you will go really far in life, my friend. Sadly, you played that game pretty well. But the decision to never go bottom, the decision to show up mid with no ultimate, and the decision to go high ground with no Aegis just lose you the game man. even if you ended up winning the game you 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 actually like triple or quadruple your chances of losing by dying there <laughs>